In this episode, we're dealing with audio tracks. So all you need is your 10 second clips and in addition to that, a piece of audio. No matter what kind of audio file you have, MP3, WAV files or any other audio track that you take off a video. So let's get started right away. So here we are and we're going to start a new project and I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it audio track audio tracks and I'm gonna bring in my 10 second or any video clips that I have here is a um, here's a piece of video and also I'm going to bring in an mp3 file the mp3 mp3 file that I have here is taken from the uh, YouTube audio library so once you are in YouTube and you start to upload videos there is also an audio library that you can access actually quite handy because all these audio tracks they come with the uh, they come with the rights to use them in any self-made video and you can also um, search and filter them according to the genre and the mood and so on so I just uh, if I want a happy mood then they are all the ones with the attribute happy. You can also filter them by duration if you need a very specific length for your video or just a small clip or a longer clip. Uh, they're all in, you see, within about three, three minutes or so. But let's get back to the one that I have here is a little audio track of two minutes and 46 seconds. I'm going to start with um, taking the movie file and drag it onto the new button we already know that that creates a new sequence with the with the clip already included the clip comes with a video track and an audio track and this is the first thing for today and it basically it's just a a cutting board with some nuts and raisins on it that i just took recently um, so the first thing that i'm going to show you is the audio the the video track comes with video and audio and you know when you move them in time that both of them are linked together in order to keep the audio always synchronized with the video uh, for some for some um, for some videos you might want to break this linkage between the two for example for deleting the audio track if there's nothing on it for example in my case there's nothing no there's no audio on it or even if you want to uh, shift them in time if they're not synchronized and you want to fix that I'm going to show you in a in a clip in a minute but let's first show you how to get rid of this linkage I'm going to keep it here uh, snap to the beginning you just select your audio and video combination you do a right mouse click and here you find there is an unlink button and as soon as you click unlink you can separately select both video and audio track and for example you can shift them in time so now they are shifted video and audio you can also hit uh, hit delete if you want to get rid of it and in our, as in our case bring in a new audio track but before we do this, I'm going to show you a short, a little example where the audio and video is not synchronized and how to fix it. So let me quickly open uh, another clip and that is basically the tutorial that I did for the, uh, that I did for the, the last time. And those tutorials usually look like this. So let's put them over here. And they usually start by, uh, you can hardly see it, but because it's a, it's a much smaller resolution. But here you can see it, I usually start, start them by clapping my hands and you can uh, see right away that both the audio and the video are not synchronized. That always happens. Um, that always happens when I use uh, my, my streaming camera um, for, that I use for video conferences and for some reason, the audio and the video for this camera are uh, about 11 frames. There's an 11 frame offset, which you have to fix. So let's fix it. Uh, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. Oh, I'm going to zoom in here, uh, like uh, just to uh, make it. So where are we? Somewhere here in the bottom. Yes. So here you can see that Here's my, my clapping 
And the clapping can be simply seen in the audio. So um, I can see here is the clapping sound. And the clapping video comes, of course, a little bit later. So uh, what I'm going to do is usually I break up the linking between the two, that is select them, then do a right click and unlink, and now they are unlinked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my time slider to the point where my hands clap together. You can also do that with the arrow keys on your keyboard and you will always jump one frame ahead. So you see all the motion blur on my hands and as soon as they are together, that is the frame where the sound should appear. And now I see that the sound is actually a couple frames earlier. So then I select my, my uh, audio track and I hold my mouse onto the peak of the clap, then click and move it and it usually comes at around 11 or 12 frames and usually know it's 11 frames uh, that my audio and video now fits together let's watch it see now it works so now i have offset my audio and my video and now the audio and video aligns again this is usually where you have this clapper board that you can have a synchronized audio and video and now i want to synchronize it again so i select the video and the audio track I do a right mouse click and I link them again. Um, the offset of, in this case, 11 frames, you can see it here, this one's compared to this one, minus 11, this is plus 11 frames. But from now on, if I want to cut it, for example, I, sel I select both my video, I bring it closer together so that you can see it better. So my audio and video tracks together. And for example, if I use my razor blade, I can anytime cut it uh, so it's the same length. I delete this front part here and from now on I can handle it again just like any other video clip where the audio and the video um, is synchronized together. The only thing is it will always keep the time offset here, the 11 frames will always show up. So that is something where you can uh, use audio and video uh, track offset or the linking uh, fix them again. So let me fix that. Uh, let me get that back to my clip here uh, where I deleted the audio track. So I unlinked it and once it's unlinked, I can separately delete the audio track. And now I'm going to bring in my new audio track, which is uh, taken from the YouTube uh, sound library, Quenjurin Cream Noir et, no, what is it called? Noir, Noir et Blanc Vie. Uh, so let's take it and pull it in. Of course, you can only pull an audio track into one of the audio tracks, not into a video track. And I'm going to pull it here and make it snap in the front. I just picked any uh, a track that I downloaded. Uh, only thing, I think I only used an attribute that's called, that was called Calm. So let's watch it uh, up here and how it works. Okay, there's a lot of going on with the audio track and not a lot on the video but now we have the point that the audio is about two and a half minutes long and my clip is not so let's see how can I uh, adjust it so that it actually ends or the, the, the volume is turned down towards the end and this is uh, basically one of the first things that you want to do with audio tracks because you can anytime cut them with a razor blade that is not that is not uh, the problem so I can go in here and just cut this piece of audio here, then take the remaining audio and hit delete. So now uh, the, the music stops a few seconds after the clips, but what I wanna do is I wanna take the volume and I wanna bring it down all the way till it's muted at the end of my clip. And that is done the following way. You select, there's more than one way to do it, but you select your audio clip and up here under effect control, under FX volume, you will find the volume level and the volume level right now is set to zero decibel decibel is the is the volume of the, the audio and right now it's zero it means it comes or it's it's used in the same volume that the audio the audio clip has every audio clip has already a volume included so it's the same original volume if you put this into minus then the volume will be lowered or plus then it will be raised so what i want is at the end of my clip and i'm going to bring my timeline to the end uh, you can by the way snap the, uh, the the time indicator to the end we're holding the shift key that it snaps to the end 
uh, I have my audio clip selected and what I'm going to do is you can see here is a stopwatch in front of level and the stopwatch is turned on that means everything you do change in these values will create a so-called keyframe so what I'm going to do is at the very end of my audio clip I'm going to create a keyframe you can uh, either click the keyframe here that will add a keyframe or it will remove it when you're right on it or you just change something so I take the zero and bring it back to the to the lowest possible number that is minus 280 something so now I have lowered the volume to to mute so it's totally silent now and that means that as I only have one or uh, uh, one keyframe right at this point before and after the one keyframe will be the same volume so now I bring it a little bit further where the volume can still be original volume here and now I take this value and set it to zero that is my second keyframe so I've created one keyframe and you can see it here one keyframe the one that I have now is original volume the second keyframe is uh, minus uh, minus 200 something so during that time during those couple of frames the volume will go from original to zero before the first one it will be original and after the second one it will also be minus something but so it will be muted now I can also take uh, the 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 work area and set it to the end of my movie not at the end of my audio and let's quickly watch it how it uh, listen to it how it sounds original volume and going down here yeah. so the volume can be animated simply by going anywhere in your audio track and when the animation is turned on so when the stopwatch is blue you can set it to a new value and that will create a keyframe it's important it's important to know that change always happens between two keyframes so one keyframe alone will only set a certain volume the second one will if it's different set a different volume and then there will be some change going on but we will be animating some other values in this uh, this uh, video series so uh, we're gonna spend more time in creating some keyframes and uh, adjusting them but, but for right now I just wanted to add an audio track and you can do so with any audio track also if you want the volume to start lower and then start uh, then, then slowly raise up to the original volume you can also uh, set your indicator to the beginning then add another add another keyframe here by automatically changing something I'm just lowering the volume a bit so let's say minus 15 then a couple seconds or frames later I'm going for zero so I have uh, minus 15 zero zero and minus a lot so that at the beginning now the volume will slowly increase and so on. okay so that was pretty simple how to place a an audio track there it is important if I want to use this audio track for my video and I want to publish it somewhere on YouTube on Vimeo or wherever you are working on you have to make sure that you actually have the rights to do so so either use your own recorded audio use your own recorded audio effects or use some royalty free audio that you get from the special sites or in my case uh, from the YouTube audio library so if you have a YouTube channel you always have the audio library and you have tons of pieces here to download so you can not only listen to them those, those tracks so now I have happy sound set so if this is what you want you can just click here download audio track okay so that was so much for the now I'm going to show you something else I'm let me quickly kick out the audio track one more time because I would like to show you something which in theory looks really well but uh, if you look closer it's not that good um, that is um, there is not we have been in the editing layout here and there is one extra layout for audio which has some nice features here but what I want to show you is on the right side just like we had the essential graphics when we added some text element um, it was, was not that big of a deal but when you are in the essential audio sounds or the essential sounds you get also tons of audio pieces that you can when you set your time slider to the beginning then you just hit play and it will show you the audio piece and you can compare it how it sounds with your video and so on the only problem is 
let's go a little bit further down. Here's one more. Very dramatic, slow piano sound. Uh, the only problem is that you need uh, that you need. To see, there's there is a there is a a, sh a shopping cart right next to it. So there, the, you need certain licenses, and you have to click on it, and it doesn't say. Oh, it does say. It will pop up and will say you cannot license this music track because I have not, uh, I have not uh, created an account in Adobe Stock, and of course I have not uploaded some money. So this is all these essential sounds, basically the things that you use here. Those are not for free, thirty-seven thousand, but not for free. So you can see that when you take one of those clips, let's say I want to use this one, and you take and drag it into your timeline, it works well, and you can also export it, I'm sure, but. Uh, it will always show up here in your project window and it will tell you that this is a track that you haven't bought. So the, the, the soundtrack in the reflection here, for example, is not, uh, is not one that is licensed to you. The other one that I downloaded from my audio library here, of course, I'm allowed to use it in my YouTube video. Okay, so let's quickly kick it out because I'm not allowed to do that and I'm going to show or uh, present this video tutorial to you. Okay, so I hope that was a quick introduction to using sound in, uh, in Adobe Premiere. Thanks for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.